Hello there. This is an exercise where we're going to talk a bit about t-tests and we're going to be using a data set that's found in the Morling book. So let's get started, shall we? So on the syllabus page, I have now put a file in. So a little bit of a trick here is instead of just using data sets that are internal, that are saved in the computer package that you have, this is actually going to start to mirror the things that you'll be doing next semester or in your job where you'll have some data, maybe grab it from the internet, and then start to do some numbers with it. So on the syllabus page, I put a link into a file, Morling's Tattoo Intelligence Data. And to get this, this is what you'll do. You'll click this, and you'll see that this comes up. At that point, you can then click the download button. And you will see that it says, if you're using Chrome down here at the bottom, here is your data set. OK, now we're going to open up a tab and start up Jamovi. And we're going to do it on the cloud. And we'll start this off. Start up with your user, and it starts a session. With no trouble, because I'm the professor, and it always works the first time for the professor. Now I want to open up a file. So this is where it's a little bit different. We're going to say open, and now on this device, that means your local computer. If you're working with the Chrome book, you're going to have to then say, I want to open the cloud that I have open for my account. But down here we have the data. We can double click on it's in the downloads data sets. This PC and my downloads are on my D drive. And we double click on that. And it then brings our data in. And just as before, it defaults to think that everything is nominal. So here we have a group ID. Do you or do you not have a tattoo? Intelligence test scores one, intelligence test scores two. So what we're interested in here is the have a tattoo variable and the time one and time two intelligence test scores. Well, we need to come in and say, hey, these things are going to be continuous. So I'm going to left click and select both of them, right click and select setup, and then say, hey, instead of these things being nominal, I want to say that they're continuous and hit the up arrow and now they're continuous, okay? First things first, it's probably a good idea to have some idea of the scores that are involved on your variables. So let's go into the exploration part and select descriptives. And we might be interested in the wave one and wave two intelligence test scores. Uh, and we might want to have them split out separately by whether or not you have a tattoo. So here we see have a tattoo, wave one, wave two. I'm sorry, have a tattoo as values of one and two. And the number of people in each of the groups at time one and time two is the N. The number, the amount of missing data is zero. And here's the mean for have tattoo and don't. At time one, we can see, oh, you know, the time one scores for the people uh, with the when it's with the tattoo are 5.7. And the people without a tattoo is 7.25. Maybe that's a difference. At time two, gosh, those means are a lot closer together. Maybe when we run T-tests, we're going to get different answers depending on whether we use the wave one or wave two data. And the standard deviations, 1.5 and 1.0, look kind of, kind of close to each other, probably good enough. And the same song, second verse for the wave two data. Uh, if we want, we can have more statistics. Generally speaking, the confidence interval for the standard error of the mean, that is how much are these means going to jump around upon replication is given here. If you would want it to report a mean, you can do that. Uh, the standard error of the mean, that is the standard deviation you would expect in the means, how much they would jump around if you did them over and over and over again is given there, all right? So let's get, and, and if we want, we can also take a look at a few plots here. We've talked a bit about box plots. 
And here we see for the wave one data, the have a tattoo and don't have a tattoo differences given there. We see a few observations that are pretty atypical in here. So if, for example, these observations result in us estimating a fundamentally different mean, those observations are influential. If, however, having those observations is going to have us observe a larger standard deviation within the group than we otherwise would, that observation is an outlier. And down here, we see the wave two data as well. well. If you want, you can also make density plots. And the density plots are going to give us a rough idea of the shape of the distribution. So we can know, for example, if these things are skewed. This looks a little bumpy, and that's because it's kind of a small data set. All right, we're now in a position to do our t-tests. So we'll come over here and we'll say, we're going to do an independent samples t-test. And our grouping variable is, do you have a tattoo? And the dependent variable is the wave one score. And just so we can you know, save time, we'll also do it for the wave two score. So here's our first t-test. This is the student's t-test. And that shows that for wave one, there's a big difference. That is that first group is a lot lower. In the second, and as evidenced by the p-value of minus 0.001. And for the second wave, it looks like there's no statistically significant difference observed because the p-value is not significant. As I mentioned in class, probably this is not the t-test that you should be doing these during this century. Uh, because it assumes the standard deviation, which in each of the groups is the same. Now, we kind of got lucky here. It's about the same, but the Welsh's t-test is preferable. So in this, you see pretty much the two tests are singing the same song. The Welsh's test is identifying a t-value that's almost the same as the old student's value, highly significant at the OOGs level as we joke around. And for wave two, it's not. Down here, you see some hypotheses. This is, we've set up our t-test to answer only the question, is group one different, higher or lower than group two? If you wanted to do individual little tests as to whether one group is alone, the alternate hypothesis is only if the one group is higher than the other, then you can click those buttons. So we have our t-test. We might be interested in looking at the mean difference and the confidence interval on that. So here we find the mean difference is 1.519 from the have tattoo and not tattoo groups in wave one. And that's pretty much similar to what we are observing here in our box plots. And similarly for the wave two data, we don't have much of a difference. It's not significant. The mean difference is only 0.337. And over here on the right, you see the confidence intervals. The book talks about Cohen's effect size, and we can calculate that. If we were to take the variables across have tattoo and not have tattoo and standardize them to a mean of zero variance of one and conduct our t-test, that's the Cohen's D in this particular case. And here over on the right-hand side, you see the confidence interval going from minus 1.79 to minus 515. On here on the bottom on wave two, we see, oh, the Cohen's D is a small number. And on top of that, the confidence interval goes from a negative number to a positive number, which is another way to tell if something is not statistically significant. You can also make some you know, nice impressive things to impress your lab mates or the person reading your paper. You can look at the group descriptives. This is like what we just saw before, the individual means and the descriptive plots or the differences. So it'll give you the means and the medians and then kind of a, a quickie little way of seeing if there are things going on there. These other things, the homogeneity test, the normality test, and the QQ plot, those are all things that you'll cover later. But for right now, we're just happy having people do these types of T-tests. Okay.
that's the independent groups t test. Now, there's another kind of t test. Okay, so now let's look at the case where maybe you're interested in knowing did people change over time, wave one to wave two, across the tattoo and no tattoo groups. That's going to be a paired samples t test. And to do that, we're going to indicate to the program our paired variables, wave one, wave two. So here we see a t-test to indicate the statistical significance of the difference between the wave one and the wave two scores for each person, the growth, if you will. That's a little awkward that they put a negative number there, but that's because they're taking wave one minus wave two. We might be interested in what that mean difference actually looks like. We'll click the mean difference button and the confidence interval. So on average, the wave one scores are 1.24 points lower than the wave two ones. And the confidence interval on that difference goes from minus 1.59 to minus 893. And just as for the other ones, we can look at an effect size and ask ourselves whether Cohen's D shows us a big difference. So yes, wave one scores are significantly lower than wave two scores as evidenced by this big negative number and the lower and upper values both being negative. I can also look at descriptive statistics. Those are just the means and standard deviations that we saw at the beginning of this. And I can also look at my descriptive plots. It kind of gives you a cheaty little graph of what the variation looks like in the mean and the median. There are other things in here like the normality and test and the QQ plot. We're not going to cover those right now because at this point, I'm just interested, can we do a t-test group and can we do a dependent t-test group? Okay. And that should be enough for us to play with. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.